Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I've got a video all about packaging for press-on nails. So I originally thought of making a video all about everything you need to start your own press-on nail business, which I still will do, but I just felt like packaging is so important and it literally needs a video just all for itself. So if you guys would like to find out more, then just keep on watching. So in my opinion, there's two main ways that people usually sell their press-on nails in. So usually it's in like boxes like this, or I will insert a picture here of um, these like, little plasticky cardboard things that usually do it on too. I don't have any of those because I never actually ventured out into that part of the packaging. I always strictly stick to my boxes. But I have done a little bit of research into those plastic cardboard things. Um, and I'll basically describe both packaging choices, the pros and cons, the prices, the everything. And hopefully they'll help you guys decide which one you would like to use. So I'll start off with boxes for the first part. So with boxes, there's a few different basic shapes you can do. You can do a square, you can do a long one, you can change the design of them, you can do like a marble, you can do a sparkly one, whichever one you like. So I feel like both plastic and cardboard have a wide range of like creativity you can have. Dare I say the cardboard one more than the boxes? because the boxes you just buy them ready-made unless you go as far as making your own and with the cardboard ones you mainly personalize it all to yourself but with the boxes you get different type of sizes you can always get like bigger ones so you can actually put like i don't know three four five six even sets into one little box which is kind of cool and yeah so another part with the boxes i feel like they're much more luxurious so when you obviously open a box it just feels much more expensive and nice and they're really nice so that when actually a customer finishes using them or something, they can actually reuse the boxes. They can keep their press nails in there after using them too. So they're kind of cool, kind of cute. And yeah, I really like boxes myself. I don't know. I just like the luxurious feel of them and everything. So I originally really like to use those. Those are like my go-tos. However, at the moment, I'm trying to get rid of my marble ones just because they're one of the ones I got when I was testing out different packaging when I didn't know which one I wanted. And I'm just trying to get through them and sell them out and then strictly stick to my sparkly ones. So for the sparkly ones, I pay about 11, 12, 13 pounds for 12 of these. So that's actually not too bad, not a bad cost. And they look pretty cute, if I say so myself. One of the downside for boxes is the shipping costs. So unfortunately, as you can see, especially with this one, this one's very, very thick compared to this one, as you can see. So it's very important that you also get your packaging when it comes to boxes right. So this one will cost me around £3.50 to send, just in the UK, let alone abroad. But then when I send it in this, it's much more thinner. I can, like, I can like sometimes get um, ATP shipping, sometimes £1.50 for this one. So it's much more cheaper than these two because they're much more bulkier and they no longer can go through as like a simple letter which is the slightly frustrating part of those another thing you need to focus on as well with packaging is your like branding on them so it's very important that you actually have something to do with your logo or something on the packaging just so a customer knows this is coming from you if i don't know in a, in a week's time they want to put the press nails on again they'll go through the box and they'll go oh wait glamify babe i remember them i'll buy again or I'll tell a friend if they ask it's one of those things same with clothes whenever you buy a t-shirt you might forget where you got the t-shirt from because you'll probably wear it for the next year for example but when a friend asks where did you get this stuff from all you got to do is just tick the little label and you know exactly where you got it from so same thing with like your press on nails you want to have your logo you want to make sure you just want to be heard and you want to be known that this is your product and you're proud of it and here's your logo and yeah so that's basically how I do it I put my little logos here I believe I got them from Vistaprint just circular little logos and I got a bunch of those and I just stick it right in the middle of each box that I use. All right, so now we'll talk about those plastic cardboard packaging. So when it comes to those, they can be cheaper and they can be more expensive. So for example, buying those cardboard bits where you can actually personalize it, the, one of the best places are basically Vistaprint. So on Vistaprint, if you search up note cards, you actually find a little section on the website for those and you can personalize it and get it basically shipped right to your door. And with them, it's like a bit of a funny situation because if you, if you buy 10, 
it equals about 80p per unit but when you buy 40 it equals about 60p per unit so the more you buy the less per unit it costs and the more like affordable they become so when you only buy 10 it almost equals like 10 pounds or even 11 and it's almost the same price as just 12 of those and you get 12 and you get 10 there and in my opinion this is more of a luxurious experience it's open in packaging and all of that type of stuff but with the plastic cardboard ones it's like it's just more expensive but the moment you order 40 it equals about 25 pounds oh and then all right 40 that makes more sense for 20 whatever pounds but here for just 12 you get 11 pounds right so then 24 of those they'll be 20 something so already you're better off buying the cardboards so it's much cheaper along with that you also have to buy those little plastic containers that you pop it on you don't always have to but it's a nice little addition just so that when you do pop it into an envelope when you send it the nails don't fly about and end up falling apart in the envelope but then you can always just take the risk and just do that because essentially when i guess when the customer opens the envelope they will be all in there but it's just a horrible experience for a customer to open up an envelope and all the nails are mushed up down down in the bag in the envelope and then they have to figure out which nail is which and it's just a, such a like a horrible experience basically so at the end of the day the packaging is all about experience you want your customer to open up the packaging and love the packaging so just because i say boxes in my opinion are much more luxurious isn't always the case you can literally make those cardboard pieces so funky cute looking that it might even beat the boxes it's all about the aesthetics of the packaging and if you're really able to maximize the cardboards to the fullest and make it as cute as possible then yeah definitely go for it because it would be so much more cheaper for you and when popping one of those little cardboard things into an envelope you have to remember that this is very thick and an envelope thing would be so thin that you would literally be end ending up like that you literally be sending off those for like 60p and this obviously will be like £3.50 so there's a big price difference and it's one of those things where you have to consider the cost consider what you want to do as a brand how you want to be presented to your customers and what type of vibe you want to give what you can also do is when you choose to for example use those cardboard packaging what you can always use as like a nice little tip for your customers is that you are choosing to use that type of packaging to lower costs for your customers, which will also give you like a nice little look from the customers. They'll think that you're really trying to lower the prices for them and trying to keep them as affordable as possible. So they might really appreciate that. It's really down to your customer, like your target customers. Like who are you really trying to target? Are you just gonna try and target people with not so much income, trying to just get the nails done for cheap and you're gonna be an affordable personnel business? Why are you gonna make very cool funky expensive looking nails and selling them in a very bulky box that's going to also cost so much more like what is exactly your target market so there's a lot of steps as you can see with packaging that you have to do you really have to analyze your business who are you going to sell to how much how much money would these people have would they be able to afford your nails are these the type of people you want to sell to is the packaging right for those customers? Is this what you really want to do? Do you want to be saving more money on packaging? Do you want to be sa saving more money elsewhere on gel polishes? You know, like, do you want to have more expensive packaging, but then lower the cost on gel polishes and use cheaper brands? Like, what exactly is it you want to do? Everything about a personnel business has to be targeted, you know? I recently came across a personnel business that actually very loudly speaks about them just using korean or asian i think it was gel polishes and i think it's such an amazing idea they're becoming very niche they're really trying to have like a like a something different from other press on now businesses and people you know will support that they're very different their voice in that and obviously along with that the packaging will probably be very asian themed very korean very like really cool looking packaging and you really want to like focus on what you want to do how are you going to stand out from all the other personnel businesses because it has become a very saturated area now everyone's using them everyone's making them everyone's got crazy prices and sometimes it's very daunting when you're creating very high quality personnels and you're charging what you believe should be charged and there's people out there who are selling them for like eight nine pounds and you're here with like 20 pound press on nails and like no one's buying from you so it is very daunting but you will finally get your customers there's so many people in this world and there will, there's at least a few people that will buy your product so never give up keep pushing 
and you would definitely get there. It might take you a year, it might take you two, it might take you five, but you will get there. Some people take a few months because they blew up on TikTok or something, and some people's gonna take a bit longer, and it's absolutely fine because at the end of the day, you're gonna get there, and that's what the most important thing is, okay, guys? So please don't give up. But I love personal nails, as you will probably know. So I have a lot of videos on my channel if you guys are wanting to get into it, different nail designs, really funky, cool little things you can do. You can copy me, you can change up the colors you can get inspiration uh you guys do what you want to do i'm very happy to share everything i know about the industry and everything that i basically know about press on nails so if you guys like to if you guys have watched this video and it has helped you let me know down in the description what type of packaging you will be using or what packaging you already use and if there's any more tips and tricks you want to let and me or anyone else know in the comments please do let's share and let's help each other out so that'll be the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.